Hi, I'm Paul Chartier and this is Heart of Gold. One would think in these cold months that nothing's being done, everybody's staying indoors and hibernating. Not true. Heidi Guckenberger, Stevie Lowry with Girls on the Run. Thank you for coming in to do this. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, I know what Girls on the Run is or are, <laughs> but Heidi, why don't you tell people what Girls on the Run does and who you affect? Sure, absolutely. Girls on the Run, uh, we inspire girls in third through eighth grade to be joyful, healthy, and self-confident. We use a um, fun, experience-based curriculum, and it also in creatively integrates running. Uh, we run two seasons. We have a spring season and a fall season. Each season is 12 weeks long. Um, the girls meet twice a week, and they learn real timely lessons about peer pressure, gossip, um, healthy eating, um, just you know, being, being in touch with themselves, healthy emotions. And during each one of those lessons, they start running. Um, throughout that 12 weeks, they, they run a little more and a little more, and then they all come together at the end of the 12 weeks, and we have the Girls on the Run 5K. And where and when will that be, do you know? Um, yes, our spring 5K is going to be April 28th at 9 a.m. at Commonwealth Stadium, mm -hmm. and that'll be open to the public. The registration will open shortly. And Stevie, you're here to talk about coaching, mm -hmm. which is what you are. Yes. Uh, how long have you been a coach? Um, I became a coach. I heard about the Girls on the Run program from a friend and contacted Heidi um, last year. Um, I guess last year was my first year. And I, I'm actually in Marion County. And I be, we became an extension of Girls on the Run Central Kentucky. And we started a group at a local elementary school. We, had, we started with nine girls. Um, and then this year we've actually, or 2012, we actually expanded to two schools to 29 girls mm. um, and we've done a lot of local fundraising um, to help with the effort and we're hoping that eventually all of our elementary schools in the district will have a Girls on the Run program. And for the girls that you coach, we'll talk from your perspective too, but for the girls that you coach, you're right there with them at least twice a week. Mm -hmm. Do you coach them in only the running, or are you coaching in the self-esteem and other areas too? Well, the awesome thing about Girls on the Run is that they, the, the program, they give you the curriculum. So each day that we meet, there is a lesson that we go over with the girls, and it may be about bullying, it may be about um, self-esteem, peer pressure, um, and there's usually activities, games, things that the girls do um, with the coaches and with each other um, that helps them learn about that specific um, subject and sometimes they're difficult subjects um, and then we also have a workout that incorporates that same subject and that activity um, that helps train them and then for the 5k um, and it's just it's an awesome program I mean, girls on the run they give you everything that you need um, and you know the training is awesome um, and so you're really prepared as a coach to, to go out there and help these girls and Heidi, from your perspective, mm -hmm. when you watch these girls enter the program, what do you see on the back end? We, we've seen some amazing things. We've seen girls who, who have not been um, active at all, that are, that are after Girls on the Run. They're becoming runners. They're going out and participating with their the other 5Ks. They're joining soccer teams. They're getting their family involved. That's one of the great things about Girls on the Run. Every participant at Girls on the Run gets a 5K training program. So they could take that home to their family, um, especially our spring 5K. We see moms, dads, uncles, brothers, sisters sign up for the race. Come. We have a grandfather that drives every year from South Carolina. Hmm. He's 79 years old, and he runs the race with his grandfather. We know that today's world is very different, and there's a lot of pressure on boys and girls and kids. And when these girls get plugged into the system, do you see week to week changes in them? Absolutely. Um, you know, I've only been doing this for two years, but I remember the first school that I coached at, um, there was a young girl who was really shy um, and, you know, just really kind of introverted. And I watched her, you know, progress through the program and she made new friends. She became more comfortable with herself. She, you know, in the beginning of practices, she would be nervous and always worried that she would mess up. And, mm -hmm. and the other girls would encourage her and, and help her, you know, with her self-esteem. And she's now, as an elementary student, running cross country for the high school. Mm. That it just helped boost her self-esteem that much. And 
you know, there's a number of stories that, that we both could probably tell you about girls that, that have just been positively influenced by this program. It's incredible. And, and that is one example. Again, these young kids today have different influences and pressures and peer pressure and things going on at home, not to mention the foundation of Kentucky, which is seemingly very unhealthy. So then these girls are, get plugged into your program. They tell their parents about what they want to do, maybe. So how do you overcome getting them into the program where maybe at home they don't get that support? Um, we have a lot of coaches that are actually teachers, and a lot of them talk to the students. They can see those girls that really need to, to be in this program, and, and they speak with them. They talk to their parents. They reach out. They ask them to apply. They ask them just to try it. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they don't emphasize. We don't emphasize. It's not a running club, mm -hmm. you know. Right. We, we integrate running into the program, but there's so much more to it. Um, so we get the girls there. We get them involved. And y we see after the first week, you know, they're asking their friends to come. You know, mm -hmm. and, and enrollment just goes up. Mm -hmm. Talk about the pressures of girls. What, what's going on in today's world that maybe in your youth you didn't have? Well, unfortunately, I think it's a lot of the same problems existed when I was their age and, and now. Um, one of the biggest issues I see is body image. You know, these girls think they're supposed to look a certain way. They're supposed to be a certain size. They're supposed to, you know, you know look this part. And um, it's interesting some of the comments they make you, when you ask them what is beautiful, you know, initially in the program, they may think being skinny is beautiful. But, you know, during the program and di the different activities and lessons we have, they, they quickly learn that, you know, that's not the definition of beautiful. And, and what on the, what's on the outside doesn't define what beauty is. Somehow, the public and press wants to make people think our favorite flavor is orange. You know, that's mm -hmm. the perfect whatever, and it goes for body image too. But people like purple, people like vanilla, people like, ch I mean, they like different flavors. So people are who they are. Exactly. And then we have a lesson that, that directly deals with the media and the way people are portrayed in the media and, and what the girl, you know, they can step back from that and, and see that and really look at that differently. One of the other things I was going to say is something I, that, you know, I didn't have growing up that the girls face now is, just the difference in, in social media, Facebook and mm -hmm. Twitter and all mm -hmm. these different things that they have to deal with. Um, bullying, you know, that has taken such a new, um, it's gone to a new level with, mm -hmm. with Facebook and those days. So we, we have a lesson on bullying. We have a lesson about those things. We talk about those things. And hopefully we give the girls what they need to, to take that back to the school and in their daily lives. Mm -hmm. I is it easier to be working only with the girls, having boys not anywhere near them where maybe they're concerned about the older girls, the eye line, you know, different things. Is it easier just to be working with girls? They, they get easily distracted. I noticed that as a coach. I mean, um, the, one thing, the one thing that I tried to impress upon the girls is that I really wanted them to be there. I wanted them to, I wanted to have their full attention. I wanted them to truly want to be there and want to participate. And, and you know, unfortunately, sometimes there's girls that maybe aren't there for the right reasons or, um, you know, find out that maybe it's not for them. But for the most part, you know, they are so interested in what we're doing. And when those 12 weeks are over, you know, they, they are sad. They don't want it to be over. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they really miss the coaches and they miss that interaction each week because they get so used to you being there. And me from the outside, I'm not a teacher. So coming in, you know, I'm um, coming in from the community and them seeing someone else that I care for them. I, I come see them twice a week. You know, that really makes an impression on them. Mm -hmm that someone cares for me. We have a lot of the girls that start out in third grade and they participate every season. Mm -hmm. So they'll, they'll be in it you know, until they're done with fifth grade. Their parents have to love this mm -hmm. because you're interjecting with them and reinforcing things that maybe the parents are saying at home but they're not gonna listen to the parents but the perfect stranger, they'll listen to you and get on track and do things. And their parents have to be tickled about what you're doing to the girls. Well, one thing that I have been overjoyed to see is I think sometimes maybe the parents aren't so sure that their daughter is up to it. You know, they, mm -hmm. they maybe are, well, I don't know. And, you know, this year I watched one of my girls finish a 5K and her mother finished the last part of it with her and her mother was just astounded that her daughter had just finished oh. 3.1 miles. You That's know. a big thing. It yeah. is huge. And, and I think it really, you know, the parents are pleasantly surprised and so proud of their girls. We talked before we started 
the taping about volunteers and you need volunteers for your events and for coaching, Absolutely. what website can they go to to learn more about what you do? Um, you can learn more on our website, which is um, gotrcentralky.org. And on that website, what will they find? Um, they'll find information about the program. Girls on the Run is a national program. We've been um, in existence since 1996, so they can learn a little bit more about the background of the program, but they can learn about our volunteer needs. Um, Every one of the program, every one of the groups is coached by volunteer coaches, and we need two to four coaches at every site. Females, um, males? Females for our Primarily. head coaches, okay. but males can be assistant coaches okay. and running buddies. Mm -hmm. um, so we encourage them to, to apply as well. We have a lot of dads that come out mm. and be assistant coaches. Um, it's a 12-week program, so they commit to coming once or twice a week and just uh, meeting with the girls and helping present the, the curriculum. And as Stevie said, we provide all of the training, provide all of the materials, Every coach gets a, a large box and it has everything they would need to present the lesson. It gets the curriculum. There's markers for that lesson. There's going to be markers in the box. So snacks. Yeah, we provide every every child gets a healthy, snack. Healthy, healthy snacks. snacks. Yes, yeah. yes, that is the no key. No bonbons. And no. Ho -ho, <laughs> yes, yeah. no M and M's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and even if there's girls that don't have running shoes. Yeah. Um, yeah, we will we will help those girls get running shoes. If it's a you know if it's a family that that can't afford running shoes, we'll make sure that the girls have proper shoes. And Stevie talked about in Marion County how it's grown. What's it, what's happened in Fayette County? Absolutely, we started in Fayette County five years. This is our fifth year. Um, we started with two teams. This fall we're going to have uh, we're at 40 teams in 13 counties um, throughout Kentucky. So we've grown over those five years. How many girls? Um, in the fall we had 524 girls huh. finish the 5K. Wow. Yeah. And where was that race? That was out at Keeneland. So yeah. A little bit more hilly than yeah, oh yeah, a little bit. Little, we didn't tell the girls. That. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, you don't want to freak them out. So in the last minute, talk about why people should get on the website and get involved, and have their daughters get involved in Girls on the Run. Well, we really appreciate the volunteers. I think I've seen the volunteers that have been in the program say, "I wish I would have had this when I was a kid." Mm -hmm. They're getting more out of the program than sometimes the girls are, um, and it's it's an amazing experience just to go through the program and see the girls and see them finish that 5k um, as we talked about the girls they leave with just you know a whole arsenal of tools and, and things that they can use to help with their daily lives um, it, it's just an amazing program it's going to start them on a healthy lifestyle mm -hmm. when these girls become young ladies young adults college students you know that you played a part in their maturity and who they are as young ladies, as women, as mothers, as adults, as, as contributing citizens. And that's a big thing that you're doing. Mm -hmm. It's huge. I mean, to see these girls become empowered. And I know this is something they'll never forget. I mean, mm -hmm. their experience with Girls on the Run is something they will take with them for their life. I mean. Well, I will never forget having you on the program. <laughs> so thank you very much. It's been very memorable. I want to go for a run right now. I'm Paul Chartier, <laughs> Heart of Gold. We'll be right back.